exception reached our shores when China lied about the virus. Over the past year, American people have suffered. More than 600,000 Americans have died from the virus. 3.8 million across the, across the world. This pandemic we did not invite, but we have spent the ingenuity of America to defeat it. But they must be held accountable for their lives. Yet the President of the United States has refused to take any action. The Democrat majority in this House has refused to take any action. What's even worse is the first actions from this President and new administration was to send more than $200 million to the World Health Organization. Not asking for them to be reformed, not asking why they lied, not asking why they allowed China to influence them, and then in their budget proposed more than $100 million more to go to the World Health Organization. The Democrats in this Congress for the past year have allowed China to continue to lie. As many of you know, in the last Congress, I spent more than eight months working with the Democrat majority trying to create a bipartisan China task force. Equal number of Republicans, equal number of Democrats, long before we had heard of any COVID virus. The Democrats agreed finally after eight months. We even settled the number of members and who they would be. We even brought in the Washington Post to interview before we would announce. But when that day came, the Democrats said no. I do not know what the Chinese have on this Democrat majority, but it must be very powerful. Why would they not participate in a task force to make sure America and the next century is ours? Just as, just as then, we will not sit back, we will take action. Our China task force met, our China task force came out, led by Mr. McCall. Two-thirds of all their proposals were bipartisan. We can no longer wait for this Democrat majority to get to the bottom of where this virus came from. So that's why we have proposed eight pillars that will deliver the transparency and justice all Americans are calling for, and the world. The transparency, and the members here will come up, talk about a number of their bills, a part of this, but we need to first start by declassifying the intelligence for the entire world to know where COVID came from. Stop funding game of function with China. Prohibit NIH funding to bad governments like China, Russia, North Korea, or Iran. We need an overhaul of the World Health Organization including demanding the re leadership to be replaced. The United States need to utilize every authority to continue to investigate. We need to restrict the visas and impose sanctions so they understand that they cannot continue to do this around the world. We need to work with the international community to relocate the 24th Winter Olympic Games. If China would lie to the world where millions died, why would the world reward them with another Olympics? We also need to provide the American people an avenue to directly hold the Chinese government accountable for the loved ones they lost because of Chinese deception. This comprehensive plan will ensure Americans get the accountability and transparency, transparency they deserve. We cannot allow the wrongdoing of China go unnoticed, and more importantly, to not allow the accountability to happen. With that, I want to bring up our whip, Steve Scalise. Thank you, Kevin. We need to hold China accountable. Congress needs to dive into and thoroughly investigate the origins of COVID-19. House Republicans have been calling on Speaker Pelosi to do this for more than a year now. And that was long before mounting evidence has come out now that, in fact, that this virus may have started in the Wuhan lab. There should be hearings right now. All the committees of jurisdiction should be having hearings into the origin of COVID-19. Yet, for some mysterious reason, Speaker Pelosi continues to refuse to hold those hearings, to hold China accountable. Why would Speaker Pelosi want to cover up for China's role in the origin of this virus? 
especially when every day that goes by makes it harder and harder to get all of the facts that may be available. We know that there are some American scientists who were in communication with the scientists in that Wuhan lab. Let's get all of that information. Let's get the facts on the table. Let's have real transparency so that we can ultimately get to accountability. Because we've seen the devastation in America with hundreds of thousands of lives lost. We've seen globally millions of deaths. We've seen the devastation it's had on our economy. We had the Federal Reserve Chairman Powell yesterday before the Select Subcommittee on Coronavirus and talked about the devastating impact it's had on our nation. Yet Speaker Pelosi refuses to have an investigation into the origin of this virus over a year after the pandemic was declared. Months after emails have now surfaced that show communications between top scientists that this may, in fact, have started in the Wuhan lab. So House Republicans are not going to sit idly and wait as we've continued to demand for Speaker Pelosi to have formal hearings in the committees of jurisdiction. We've just announced that select subcommittee on coronavirus Republicans will hold a hearing next week into the origins of COVID-19. We've already invited a number of top scientists. Some have accepted. I hope all ultimately come and accept. Uh, We're also going to have some of our colleagues who have been investigating different aspects of the origin. It's long past time for Congress to thoroughly investigate the origins of COVID-19. It's taken such a tough toll on America and the world, but there's still serious questions that linger that Congress needs to answer. Congress should be holding these hearings Because Speaker Pelosi refuses to hold China accountable, we're stepping up and we're going to do it ourselves. But we're still going to call on her to bring all of Congress together to do this. There's no reason that she shouldn't. And she should be asked that question every day until she finally agrees to work with us on a bipartisan basis and hold China accountable and look into the origins of COVID-19. With that, I'm happy to bring up our conference chair, Elise Stefano. Thank you, Steve. The evidence is very clear. China lied and Americans died. We want justice for the American people, transparency for the American people, and accountability for the more than 600,000 Americans who lost their lives from the COVID-19 virus. Every American deserves to know the truth about the COVID cover-up. That's why one of the bills House Republicans are highlighting is the World Deserves to Know Act that I co-introduced with my colleague from Virginia, Rob Whitman. This bill calls for a full investigation to determine the extent of China's actions and cover-up. It sanctions Chinese health agency officials until there is an independent investigation into the origins of COVID-19. And it requires President Biden to work with the intelligence community to identify members of the Chinese Communist Party involved in the persecution of whistleblowers and citizen journalists and sanction them for human rights abuses. Unlike Nancy Pelosi and House Democrats, House Republicans will never be Chinese Communist Party sympathizers. And we will not rest until there's a full investigation into China's role in the COVID-19 virus outbreak and cover-up. Thank you, Leader McCarthy, for hosting this press conference, and I'm proud to introduce our Foreign Affairs Ranking Member, Congressman Mike McCall. Thanks, Elise. Uh, Thank you, Leader. Um, You know, the world deserves to know the truth. Um, We need to find out why, because we don't want this to happen again. It happened in 2004. Scientists walked out of the lab, contaminated with SARS. And that's why the International Health Organization got involved. WHO wholly failed in its mission to warn the world about what was becoming a global pandemic. We cannot allow this to happen again. Almost 4 million people are dead now uh, because of this recklessness. I came out with the China Task Force report last uh, September. In this report, we held that... uh, a possibility it may have come from, guess what, a level four bio facility in Wuhan. Not too hard to to connect those dots, right? Since that time, I would assess it's probable it came out of that lab because more and more evidence is unfolding. And as Whip Squeeze said, we're going to have a hearing on this next week, and the Foreign Affairs Committee is going to update our report in the China Task Force with 
the origins of COVID-19 report. Since then, we found out many things. In the fall of 2019, three lab workers were hospitalized with flu-like symptoms consistent with COVID-19. They were required to report this within 24 hours. But instead, they detained the doctors, they silenced them, they destroyed the lab samples, all the evidence. We may never know the truth unless a whistleblower comes forward or we get some intelligence, which I hope we do. And let's not forget that two State Department cables came out in 2018 questioning the safety protocols at that lab. Then in January of 2020, the lab was taken over by the PLA, the Chinese military's bioweapons expert, Major General Chen Wei, took over the lab. You have to ask yourself the question, why? To control the situation, to control any investigation. They didn't want an investigation to take place. Then we found out that the WIV was studying corona-like viruses that have been genetically manipulated, called gain of function. This is manipulating ge the genetic code and how it could extrapolate from mice to bats to humans. Why didn't we know that? There are so many unanswered questions. And significantly, since 2017, the military were operating at the, the WIV, the Wuhan lab, which we think potentially could have violated the Biological Weapons Convention. We will be holding them accountable, as, as Elise said. We need to hold them accountable. If we don't, who will? I don't for the life of me understand why when the Democrats were invited to join us in this task force with a foreign nation adversary, why the denial? Why does the scientific community deny a hypothesis until it's proven otherwise? That is a real question before the American people and, and the world. As I've all, often said, it's the worst cover-up in human history. Almost 4 million people have died and 600,000 in the United States, the Chinese Communist Party needs to be held accountable. Thank you. You can introduce yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I'll introduce myself. Uh, I want to say Elise was right. China lied and people died. But I'm going to go a step further. The WHO complied. For over a year, Republicans on the House Oversight Committee have sounded alarm about communist China's lies and cover-up and the World Health Organization's collusion in assisting the Chinese government. We know China lied about the dangers of COVID-19 to hoard medical supplies in the very beginning, and now we know there's mounting evidence, as has already been mentioned, the virus originated in the Wuhan lab. In fact, Dr. Fauci's recently released emails show that scientists raised concerns about a lab leak as early as February 2020 and also indicated the virus appeared to be engineered. But at the same time, the left-wing media called the notion of a lab leak a fringe conspiracy. Activist scientists dismissed it. Big tech censored it. And Democrats ignored it. Speaker Pelosi even called it a diversion. The question about where COVID-19 originated from is not a diversion. It gets to truth and accountability so we can prevent future pandemics and hold communist China accountable for unleashing the pandemic on the world. Republicans for months have called on Democrats to join us in efforts to hold communist China accountable and get to the bottom of what happened in the Wuhan lab. After months of silence, Chairwoman Maloney and Clyburn finally got back to us. And their excuse as to why we can't hold a hearing in oversight or the COVID Select Committee well, they're too busy investigating Donald Trump. They don't have time. This is a dereliction of duty. Republicans will continue to press onward in our quest to find the truth. Next week, I'll join Whip Scalise at a Republican Select Subcommittee forum on the origin, uh, origination of COVID-19, where we'll hear from expert witnesses 
and help us gather more facts. The American people deserve answers. They want answers. And they're wondering why the Democrats continue to refuse to hold hearings. Now I'd like to uh, welcome to the podium uh, energy and commerce health care expert, Brett Gufford. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thanks, uh, Leader McCarthy, Webb Scalise, Chair Safonic. And uh, I want to thank my Republican leader, Kathy Morse Rogers, who's not able to be here right now, to do a markup, and all my colleagues behind me. Since March, I've been conducting a review of what of the origins of the COVID-19 virus. And this is what we know. We know that the Wuhan lab was doing gain-of-function research. We know that taxpayer dollars were given to the Wuhan lab. We know gain-of-function research is risky, and it is even has restrictions here in the United States. But we need to have the investigations that my colleagues have talked about, because what we need to know, we need to know, did COVID-19 originate in the Wuhan lab, as evidence seems to be pointing towards? We also need to work together, because we need to know, did U.S. taxpayer dollars directly or indirectly fund gain-of-function research, gain of research of the dollars that went to Wuhan. But we also need to know the scope of all NIH grants and taxpayer dollars for research that is sent to China or other governments that do not have our best interests at heart. So moving forward, we need to ensure U.S. grants are not going to gain a function research or any other risky research to China or people associated with the Communist Party. We need to ensure U.S. grants are not going to irresponsible foreign governments like China, Russia, or some of the others mentioned. And we also need, moving forward, need to work together and call on my Democrat colleagues to bring together to do an investigation because the American people deserve the transparency and they deserve answers. Thank you. And I will now turn over to my fellow member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, Dan Crenshaw. Welcome back to Washington. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Um, for this extremely important topic, I'm going to speak briefly about uh, my bill that I introduced last year called the Holding the Chinese Communist Party Accountable for Infecting Americans Act. And that's exactly how it sounds. How can the American people hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable? And why would we? Well, they lied and they tried to cover up their role in starting and spreading this global pandemic. That's a fact. That's something we do know, that they did lie, that they stopped the domestic flights but not international flights. This much we do know, whether it came from the lab or not, we do know that. And at best, China lied about when they knew about the virus. They jailed journalists and disappeared doctors who dared to tell the truth. And they failed to inform the rest of the world immediately about the pandemic. Now, at worst, even though a year ago the press smeared anyone who said, who said this was as a conspiracy theorist, China did all of this because they knew the virus escaped the Wuhan Institute of Virology and they were directly responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic. The evidence and common sense strongly supports this. We need a full investigation into the origins of the pandemic so we can get to the truth. But the bottom line is that China is at fault for this. People died and lives were destroyed and Americans should have the right to sue the Chinese government. Right now, China is protected from Americans suing them under the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, which limits legal action in the United States courts against foreign states. My bill will hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable for infecting Americans by removing that protection. If nothing else, passing this bill will show the world that Democrats and Republicans, the entire United States, shares a common interest and commitment to holding the communist regime accountable. We came together to pass a similar bill, and this one is modeled after the bill that allowed the victims of 9-11 to sue state sponsors of that heinous act. We should come together again as Americans to hold Beijing accountable. It'll show the Chinese Communist Party that they're not going to get away with this. It will make them pay for the havoc they've wreaked on Americans and people around the world, including their own citizens. And I can't for the life of me understand why Democrats aren't clamoring to be on the stage with us. I can't understand that. We're beating our heads against the wall trying to figure that out. We did not politicize this. We are blaming China. We're not blaming Democrats for the virus. And yet there seems to be a lack of desire a lack of curiosity about where this virus came from and, and certainly a lack of commitment to holding the Chinese Communist Party accountable. And we continue to invite Democrats to be on the stage with us and join the, and join the China task force. And I ask Speaker Pelosi to bring this bill to the floor immediately so that Americans can hold China accountable. Thank you. And I yield back to our esteemed leader. 
Thank you, Mr. Crenshaw. I want to thank all my colleagues as well. This is very simple. This should not be a Democrat or Republican issue. It should be an American issue. That's just how we approach it. But unfortunately, Democrats don't hold hearings, deny the ability to join a bipartisan China task force. We're giving them an opportunity now. Join with us on these eight pillars to make sure it never happens again. You get the truth and transparency, but you also get the justice. I believe all Americans want that. That's an opportunity for the Democrats to show they can govern together. With that, let's open it up for questions. Yes, sir. Are you concerned about the CCP's propaganda efforts and soft power influence to sway Western media in an effort to influence the way the issue is covered? I'm concerned about that, but not just the Western media, all media. We've watched time and again. I'm also concerned about the lack of ability here in a majority party. China doesn't need to hire a lobbyist. They've got the Democrats who won't even actually allow, allow the bills to come up or join an equal number of Republicans and Democrats on a bipartisan task force. We watch day in and day out. If there's anything else that gave you greater concern, look what just I said at the very beginning. Apple Daily. 26 years of a pro-democracy newspaper in Hong Kong. What did China promise the world about Hong Kong for 50 years? What did they recently do? Why do 3 million out of 8 million people in Hong Kong would come out on weekends and have an umbrella in the rain to crave one thing, freedom of speech? This week, Apple Daily is going to shut down. They do it there, they'll do it everywhere else as well. We watch it time and again. Yes, sir. The Senate uh, a couple of weeks ago just passed a massive China competition bill with bipartisan support. What is the prospects uh, for that in the House? Is that something that Republicans could get behind? Well, there's a number of things. I look at, even on the Science Committee, you're looking at bipartisanship there with Mr. Lucas, and they have to have a different approach to hold them accountable and actually do more. So I think we'll look at the bill, places we agree, we'll agree, and uh, work through the committees itself. Yes, ma'am. That Google's charity on Google Org had provided uh, financial backing for research and studies carried out by Peter Dachik uh, and his New York based Ego Health Alliance dating back to about 2010 in regards to the uh, Wuhan uh, uh, lab leak. Um, now, given your own very often uh, big defense of Silicon Valley, uh, I disagree with I, I, I'm just, uh, but I'm just curious here. I mean, how far would you be willing to go in regards to investigating Google uh, in regards to this particular report, especially since just recently you defended or are, are kind of fending off this antitrust uh, bills that are going on just today at this point over Silicon Valley? Okay, you got two different questions. In there. But you seem very like, wrong. So let me clear. Often defending Silicon Valley, given your own uh, financial interests that have been going on the past few years. Okay, so let me clarify your question first, answer it, and then correct your misinformation of what you just provided in your question as well. First of all, just as another sign of why we need to investigate this, are American companies helping fund? We know the American government gain a function as funded. We've watched Dr. Fauci say no, then yes. We've watched that we had to pull this information out. Why wouldn't we have known this ahead of time? How much more of this funding is going, maybe not directly to a grant, but another grantee coming in? Is any of this funding also going to Iran, Russia, or others, our adversaries? Now, if you go back in history, you'll find, first and foremost, I was one of the first ones to come out to change Section 230. If you want to talk about antitrust bills, I think a number of those companies are monopolies and should be broken up. I've said that for many years uh, going forward. But more importantly, look at what we're trying to discuss now. Facebook would shut us down from even discussing, and now they have to come forward and say we were right about what was happening there. Nothing in those bills do anything to the censorship of what has happened to the conservative voice. And then those bills that you talk about in judiciary from Cicilline, who actually wanted to remove President Trump from Twitter even earlier, empower an individual, the FTC, to control what is said. Three of those people were managers in the impeachment, and they want to empower an individual who is now the FTC in charge, worked for Nadler and Cicilline, who want to censor conservative voice. So would we want government even more of that? I am one who believes Silicon Valley has to stop this. 
I am the first one to come out for it. So I disagree with the premise of what you stated of my record is, and I would gladly show it to you so you never make that mistake again. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I want to investigate it. I thought it was very clear about that. Dr. Fauci brought him up and how he's flip-flopping. Would you want him to be fired? I think the question comes from fundamental. In that position, you need the trust of the American people. If the American people do not trust you, if you've taken numerous positions, I think it's the right time to replace. Think about if 600,000 Americans have died, the economic disaster that has come to the country by it, the millions of children who have been out of school, the flipping of positions time and again, I think at this moment in time, a replacement to bring the nation together in the highest paying job in the nation would be appropriate. Yes. Yes. On infrastructure, there's these bipartisan negotiations going on in the Senate. Have you been briefed at all by Republicans in that bipartisan group in the Senate on where those negotiations stand? And Democrats also are saying that they want a bipartisan bill and a reconciliation budget resolution to come up in July. What do you make of that timeline on infrastructure? Um, look, Republicans, I've sat with the president. I've talked to the Republicans on the Senate side as well and to Democrats. And I told the president very clearly, we would like to have a bipartisan infrastructure bill. But the first thing we need to do instead of talking about how much money you would spend, define what infrastructure is. Roads, bridges, highways. Broadband, electric cars, we, we can do all that. We also need to reform NEPA so we, so we don't wait a decade to build the roads and bridges that have the desire to be fixed right now. We could figure out what the need of the nation is. That will determine how much we could spend. Unfortunately, we haven't got to that point. But I will tell you as the Republican leader, this is what our desire is and this is what we would work for. We will work with anyone that wants to work in that nature of finding a bipartisan solution to our infrastructure challenge. But I was also very clear with the President as well. We are not interested in raising taxes on the American public. We've watched what has happened in these first five months from a border that's massively open to inflation we haven't seen in decades. That is a tax on every single American, and it's disproportionately on those of the lowest income. Then we've watched exactly businesses that have been crippled because of COVID and what China has done to us on this virus, that government is now competing with them and making it more difficult for people to get back to work. But unfortunately, this administration again is to deny that. The last thing you'd want to do, any economist would tell you this, with inflation rising to make government fund things that are not infrastructure, that would be detrimental to us as well, even raising inflation more. That's why the Democrats were wrong when they passed their first big partisan-only bill that only 9 percent went to COVID. It actually increased inflation in America and has harmed people and actually raised the cost for everybody, no matter what they're doing. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, it appears the Speaker is poised to announce the Select Committee on January 6th. I'm curious your thoughts on that. And, and given some of the comments that, that some Republicans have been making over the last couple of weeks about questioning if the FBI was involved on January 6th and liking it to, to tourists and reports that uh, one of your members wouldn't shake the hand of Officer Pannone. I'm curious if you would have been able to get in touch with him. Would you meet with him? He told us yesterday that he still wanted to talk to you, particularly based on some of the things your members are saying and how they voted on the commendation. This is, uh, I would gladly meet with him. And as I said before, when he, when he called the office, he called over uh, my office across the way. We gave him the phone number to the schedule and said we'd love to meet with you. And he, Unfortunately, he hasn't followed up. Well, gladly, but we'd love to schedule some. As I said before, I'd love to follow with them. Um, when it comes to what happened on January 6th, um, we want to get to the bottom of that. It's disgusting what transpired that day. We said from the very beginning. The FBI, the hundreds of arrests, I want to make sure nothing that happens here gets in the way of that. We want them to do their work. The majority of the American public believe that as well. Unfortunately, the, the Speaker has always played politics with this, time and again. She's never once talked to me about it. She hasn't followed up, and I sent her numerous letters, tried to discuss with her. She did not want to talk to me about it. The secondly is, in the Senate, they've actually had bipartisan committees working on this. Now we have a report back. We've also had 
the architect of the Capitol where we've given $10 million for them to actually take the information and make the building more protected. Now, I don't know what the speaker's going to do. I'm sure it'll be political because that's the whole way that she's handled it. Unfortunately, on the Senate side, they showed how to do bipartisanship. The FBI should be continue to be able to go and do their work. And that's what we should continue to move forward. Yes. I, I have real I have I haven't talked to those members, I don't know. I have real concern though, especially um, the scope of where we're gonna go. I know just the other day we provided a medal to the officer who was killed on Good Friday. Killed because of political purposes. Right outside that Capitol. But unfortunately the speaker does not believe that officer's life is as valued as the others. That for some reason we could not get to the bottom of why that transpired as well. I believe any indication of that. Why did this occur? Just like in 9-11, they didn't just study just what happened on 9-11, they studied what built up to it. So why wouldn't we study what built up in the summer? Why wouldn't we analyze and get to the bottom of why the National Guard were not here? Did things that happened in the summer prevent people from bringing the National Guard here earlier? Did the speaker make some comments in regards to that? I think those are the things that all should come forward. I like what the Senate has done on a bipartisan basis. Congress yes, sir. McCarthy, um, how exactly would Republicans hold China accountable? Are we talking about more sanctions? Uh, you know, would you would you encourage U.S. companies like Walmart not to sell cheap Chinese goods? What what exactly are we talking about in terms of holding China accountable? Did you come late? Let me let me walk this through again. But I appreciate the question because it's helpful. We have eight pillars, and we'll build off these pillars. The first thing we're going to do to hold China accountable is declassify intelligence information so the entire world knows. So it's not just America. And the basis should be, since the world suffered completely with deaths in every nation, we should all know the same information. We should stop gain of function with China so it never repeats again. Other nations should know that too so they stop as well. We should prohibit NIH from funding even in the other bad countries, think about Iran, North Korea, what they would do with any of these grants or others. We need to overhaul the World Health Organization. That just didn't harm America. That harmed the entire world by lying in the process with China's control of it. Um, we need to restrict the visas. And yes, we need to impose sanctions so they feel the pain of what they have done. If someone made a mistake, wouldn't you want to tell them if it's going to cause this much damage to the rest of the world? But to, to stop domestic flights because they wanted to protect their own, but allow international flights so you spread at others to try to give the falsity of where it created? I think if you look at the WTO, WTO, they have special treatment based upon where China was decades ago, where they get special interest rates and others. I don't believe that should maintain itself. Um, I think what Mr. Crenshaw talked about, they should be held to justice in our courts, that anyone can bring it forward. And I think by doing all this, especially on an international stage, should the world reward them with the Winter Olympics? Or should that be moved? I think the world should stand together and say that we will not put up with this, we will not allow you to kill millions of people around the world and lie about where it started and actually hoard at the time the medical equipment while other nations were in jeopardy. And then I think we should look at our supply chain. I've watched time and again in the middle when COVID started, the control that China had over the supply chain. We should redirect that with America. We should look at our critical minerals and others. We should also work with our allies to build our own supply chain, to make sure it doesn't continue to have the control that China desires. I watched China during this crisis use the crisis on other nations to force them, if they wanted the medical equipment, that they'd have to accept Huawei. Then I'm watching what they're trying to do now with a vaccine that doesn't work like an American vaccine in other nations as well, to use that influence to let China have greater control. So it's not just business. It's really talking about the next century. And your question goes to a much bigger question. What will the Democrats allow to come to the floor? Why will they not even allow a hearing? How many more Americans have to die? 
How much more suffering? How many more millions of children that haven't been in school are economically devastated? How many small businesses that will never restart? Why would they hold back? Why wouldn't they bring these bills forward or add to it? I welcome the addition of more ideas. But at the end of the day, let's have one approach so this never happens again and that China does not benefit from killing millions of people around the world. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good day.